Poya, only three years old then, but still have vivid memories of Peter and Linda's wedding. Practically the entire Chinese community of the city was present. There's so many food and some Bisayan children from the squatters area were allowed to enter the compound to eat in a shed near the kitchen. During the first year of marriage, Linda often brought him to their house in Bahada. She and Peter would pick Tuapoya up after nursery school from their store in their car. Tita Linda! You'll be staying at home overnight for him to fetch you. Yay! Yes. He always loves to go to your house. Don't spoil him much. It's my only way to ease my loneliness. My relatives are all in Cebu. You're right. I understand. Are you ready, Tawapoya? Yes, I am. Okay, let's go. Bye-bye, Bobby! Bye-bye! Toapoya was six, still six years old when he sensed that something had gone wrong with Linda and Peter's marriage. Linda left the Bahada house and moved into the upstairs portion of the Nanking store, which was right across the father's grocery store in Santa Ana. The Bahada residence was the wedding gift of Peter's parents to the couple. It was therefore strange that Linda would choose to live in Santa Ana while Peter would stay in Bahada, a distance of some three kilometers. So where did you live from your house at Bahada? I got bored in Bahada. I thought I can help Peter in the store. That was how she explained why she had moved to Santa Ana. Toa Poya wanted to know if she could not do that by going to the store in the morning and returning home to Bahada at night like Peter did. She wished that his mother would ask the question, but she did not. However, at the New Canton barber shop, he learned the real reason. Yes, mother. Go pitch your father at the new Canton Barbershop. We haven't ate him his dinner yet. We didn't Mama says you should go home and eat. I have eaten. Go home. Tell your mother I followed the short fly.